and welcome to Gaston Spotlight. I'm Kate Carmody, Program Chair for the Broadcasting and Production Technology Department here at the college. Today we're discussing a topic that is on the mind of many instructors and students on this campus. How do we make students more successful in online classes and how do we improve instructor-student communication? For today's show, I brought two of my strongest online mm -hmm. students, Michaela Norwood and Sarah Scruggs, to the show to discuss this with me. Welcome, ladies. Hey, thank you Hi. for having us. Yeah. So let's talk about online classes are so different than regular classes. How, Michaela, do you manage that? Um, time management is a big thing with me. I like to plan ahead before I have to do it, so that way I'm not like struggling to get it all done in the same night. Okay, well how exactly do you manage your time? I know Sarah, you've got so many things going on yeah. and you're taking so many classes and every time someone says, Sarah, will you help me? You're right there. How do you find time to make the yeah. online classes work? Um, I plan ahead for everything. I keep in, I'm an artist, I do graphics and all too, plus homework, planning podcasts, so I plan specific days in the week for when I do what. I usually try and get things turned in early or I try and tell myself, oh, the due date's actually an earlier date than it is because I know I'm prone to um, procrastinating. And so I have to tell myself certain dates so that way, that way I don't do that. Do you guys set alarms? What do you what do? You do? Um, um, I just kind of like tell myself a few days in advance, well, this is due that day. So I'm going to start working on it like three or four days before that. So that way, if I have a question, I can, you know, be able to ask the instructor and have time to yeah. look it up or like look up the book and everything. How do you exactly do you go about doing your online classes? Do you put it in a Word document, a text box? What What's your method? Um, for me, I usually do it in Word. I feel like it's a bigger space to work on instead of like a small text box. Um, generally, I do that for the bigger assignments, but if it's something smaller, um, like 150 words or whatever, I'll do it in the text box just directly on the assignment. Okay, what, what tips do you guys have for people that are struggling? Um, <clears throat> I know an issue with a lot of people's motivation. I don't always feel motivated to do things, but it's important to get a schedule in place because if you feel once you get into doing that constantly, it'll just become routine. And I feel like that's the most important thing. So do hybrids make things easier for you or do you prefer straight online classes? Um, I, I like hybrids because I like to have the personal one-on-one -on -one contact with the teacher. It helps me learn a lot better than just reading it on the class online. So yeah, I do prefer hybrids over regular online classes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely agree. Having access to, especially in our department with the technology we have here, um, it, it really helps to have someone I can go ask questions to, um, but even with most that are just just plain online classes having that direct communication through email as long as I have that I'm usually fine okay and let's talk about resources I feel like we always have a lot of resources in the online class that nobody ever looks at do you guys look at the resources what do you use as a guide to get your assignments done mm -hmm. you can be honest um, I it depends on the class honestly I feel like there are some where you definitely have to use the resources, lecture materials. Um, I'm in broadcast sales right now, and I feel like the lecture materials for that class are very important. Um, and of course, this depends on the teacher and what class they have set up. But a lot of the times, they'll have quiz notes or notes on a chapter, which more often than not will directly go back into what answers are in certain assignments. So I feel like those are always definitely important to look at. Either that or I, I'll use Google and for different resources. Kayla, what about you? I like to use uh, the book and then if I can't find something in the book I just go to the internet and usually it helps me find what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's talk about if you have a problem. If you have a problem in an online class, what do you do? I mean, do you feel comfortable approaching the instructor? Um, I definitely do for the classes I've had, but I've also directly been in contact with you. I know you. Most of my online classes have been with you. Um, you haven't taken online classes with people other than mm -mm. me. Nope. But I haven't had issues before with other teachers whenever I've had issues, just making sure I email them professionally to ask any questions that usually helps. Um, I usually can email a teacher even if I haven't met them before because it doesn't really like intimidate me. I'm not 
afraid to do it because I know that that's what they're there for. Mm -hmm. They're there to help and they're there to help you with any problem you need. So I don't have any problem emailing a teacher that I've never met. Mm -hmm. I think that's I think that's really important. I think often people silently struggle. They don't yeah. ever. They're scared to reach out the ins to the instructor, even if they know them. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes they'll sit yeah. and struggle and not yeah not and say either. anything or just kind of come out of the gate mm -hmm. and yell at the instructor. I think people with texting have gotten so into the habit of just mm -hmm. spitting out what they want to say that mm -hmm. they're not professional in their emails. So yeah. I think that's really important because I think we all need to treat each other how we would like to mm -hmm. be treated. So and especially when you go into the workforce that's going to be expected. Oh yeah. yes, yes. And so if there's a mistake, if an instructor makes a mistake, Newsflash, we're human beings. It's a crazy mm -hmm. concept. <laughs> but how do you, what do you do? I know Sarah's contacted me before when I've made a mistake. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, usually it got resolved pretty quickly. It's just being calm about it, um, yeah. saying what your issues were and, you know, being honest. Don't hide where your issues are, or what the issues were in the assignment. Um, you're, you're paying for these classes, you know. You need to get what you can out of them. So if there's an issue, you know, address it. Uh, calmly and that's pretty much as much as you can do. How do we motivate the unmotivated? I know it's kind of a hard topic mm -hmm. but how do we get people who uh, it's so hard for me because I want everyone to be successful every last student that comes in here and I guess mm -hmm. my fault is I always care too much about everything but how do we get how do we reach those students that are just struggling online and won't say anything Mm -hmm. What what do you think instructors can do to reach those students? Um, if it's like a particular student that's like kind of making bad grades or like that's dropping and losing their motivation, then I would suggest like maybe sending them an email about a office meetup or showing them your office time so that they know that they can come in and meet with you. Because a lot of times I think, like you said, they suffer in silence and they think that, oh, I don't need to go up there or I don't want to go up there and them think that I'm stupid or I don't know what mm -hmm. I'm doing. Right. And it's like you need to understand that it's fine because that's what they're there for. They're yeah, literally there to help. It's absolutely fine. I'd rather have people ask me a thousand questions than zero and then sit mm -hmm. there and silently struggle. What have instructors done that have make it, made it easier for you? Um, communication is always up there. Just being able to ask questions honestly and not feel, it's like what you were saying, don't make them feel like they're stupid. You don't do that. Um, that's always, if you feel like you can ask any questions, you know, there are no stupid questions. You know, read the instructions as much as you can, try and understand it, and if you don't understand it, ask something. Because, you know, like I was saying before, you, you pay to be here. You know, these are, this is one of the few times that you're gonna focus on a subject and learn as much as you can on it. And um, take advantage of that, you know. But communication, definitely. If there's good communication, if I feel comfortable, then that, that's the best thing. Well, there's also too much communication sometimes. Mm -hmm. I feel like in, students wait till the very last second and then panic in the middle of the night before an assignment is due. So yeah. I think that time management you guys were discussing is really important. Definitely. And that would probably prohibit that because I can't help a student when I'm sleeping. Mm -hmm. yeah. So then they wake up in the morning and they're all panicked because they missed their assignment, mm -hmm. but that easily could have been fixed had we talked about this on Wednesday or Tuesday, yeah. Yeah. things like that. What frustrates you guys about online classes? Like, what do you wish you had more of? Um, I feel like I've had classes before where, sorry, I lost track again. Um, what frustrates you about online classes? What, what, do you, what do you want more of? What do you want less of? Um, I know there's been the topic before of having like more communication with other students. I feel like sometimes that's a good thing when we critique each other's work but sometimes I feel like it shouldn't be pushed too much all the time because sometimes I just feel like focusing on the work I'm being given and studying that is where I benefit the most for me. Yeah. What about you, Michaela? Um, like she said, like the discussion posts where we have to reply to everybody's, like it can be annoying because like, like she said, you like to focus on your own work. But I also crave, whenever I'm doing an online class, I realize, which is why I switched to more in-person classes, is because I crave the in-person, being able to ask the teacher anything at any time. And I can't do that online, so. 
So what do you guys think about having like collaborate um, sessions where you have to get together with your class with like a video chat, things mm -hmm. like that? Would you like to see those in online class in our online classes, or is that just one more thing too many and you're just not interested? I think the video chat thing is an interesting idea. I don't think that a lot of people would even like participate if it was just an IM session where they just have to respond like that. But if it was like a video chat, I feel like it would be more participation would happen. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I'd, I'd honestly have to see. For me, I feel like I've ended up before in projects where I did a lot of the work. And so I kind of, yes. I kind of <laughs> just prefer to do my own work at this point. Mm -hmm. um, but depending on how it's done, that could be interesting to see. Okay. Um, I know a big issue, well, I guess we already discussed this, is getting students to do assignments. Mm -hmm. I guess we already touched on this, but is there really any way to get more people to complete assignments? Because I recently found out this is a campus-wide problem that mm -hmm. people just will go, especially in hybrids, will go to the class, do the coursework, and then the homework comes and they do nothing. Mm -hmm. What, what, can, what can we as instructors do better to help the students at the college? I feel like a grade drop more, like if it was to be more drastic, I feel like that would like push people to do better because Zeros if they aren't think, enough. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. I feel like because it doesn't really change your grade that much sometimes, especially homework grades, mm -hmm. that if it was to be a more drastic drop, mm -hmm. then it would be more helpful for them and they would be like, well, I can't miss this because my grade is going to really like drop from it. And I feel like this is a question that really depends on the class and it depends on the instructor. Um, I had a friend before and I, I told you this, she was having issues where the week's assignments didn't come up mm -hmm. and it was obvious the issue was on the teacher's end. And when the teacher replied in all caps <laughs> in email, um, being like, oh, well, no one else has said anything, so this isn't an issue. Yeah. When it clearly was an issue that only they could fix. And they right. ended up finding that out later, but it had been like four days later, and that's a lot of time that she could have been spending working on the assignment. Um, so, you know, double check everything, already be, you know, it works on both sides. Mm -hmm. um, making sure things online, assignments and everything are how it is at that point, if you have everything laid out you're communicating, you know, as you should. It's kind of on the end of the students um, rather than the teachers, I feel. Right. And it just goes back into making yourself set a routine so that you're doing these assignments. And I think some of the issues is sometimes online classes, some of them are a little bit easier. So people feel, oh, I can do that later. And then they push it to the last minute. Right. And it ends up messing them up. And then the assignment that week is actually harder than what yes. they thought it was going to be. Yes. So they just don't do it. And then they so. don't do it for the two weeks after because they're embarrassed they didn't do it the week before. And then you have the snowball effect. Yeah, yeah I suggest. And then you're getting a visa grade alert, so, <laughs> which you, you don't want. Yeah. After you turn in an assignment, go ahead. If it's up, look and see what the next week's will be. And then plan a day where you can go ahead and work on that. Make sure you have an idea of how much work it'll, how much time it'll actually take to do. And I think that can help. Right. I think one quick thing just to say, um, I don't think a lot of the students realize that we have a lot of rules that we have to follow as instructors. Mm -hmm. We have certain 10% rules we have to follow and things like that. Mm -hmm. And students sometimes don't realize that we're not doing things to be mean. We have college policies that we mm -hmm. have to follow. So yeah. thank you guys so <laughs> much for coming on the show today. I really hope that um, this helps some students with their mm -hmm. online classes. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. And thanks for watching Gas in Spotlight. We'll see you next time.